Bye bye, Delay Breakout. The sun goes down a lot it's earlier. <laughs> I'm running out of daylight. Hi guys, there's a reason that I titled this video show versus tell rather than the more commonly show don't tell or how to show instead of tell because not all telling is bad. Yep, the second sentence in and I'm already trying to confuse you. To show or to tell is the great debate of creative writing. Some absolutely think you should never settle for telling and I am of the opinion that you can do both and you won't get eaten. By a dragon. A lot of this depends on personal preference or the genre that you're writing in. Take Harry Potter. Most of the novels take place at a school so it only makes sense that their subjects will be told and not shown. They practice pronunciation first and then they are told how to flick their wand to get it just right. This is an example of when telling comes into play in a story, but they also learn through other witches and wizards being shown how to do it. Anyway, one of the many issues that people have against the show don't tell rule is length. The more you show, the longer your novel, and the higher the potential that you might end up boring your reader. This is the root of all confusion on this topic. Too much of a good thing is always a bad thing. So how do you show everything without boring the reader? Easy. You don't show everything. All right, I hope that was helpful. Bye guys. Just kidding. The trick to showing instead of telling is being specific about details necessary to your storyline. How do you bore a reader? You ramble on about something not important. How do you make something important to a reader? Make them care about the characters and whether they're going to achieve their goals. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's back up for just a second. Let's start from the beginning. So what's the difference between showing and telling? You might think this is too easy of a question to think about, but it's always best to start from the bottom when you're learning these things. Showing uses descriptions that allow the reader to imagine the story and the events. Telling relies on exposition to relate ideas directly to the reader. From my brief definition, you can imagine why writers and readers prefer showing over telling. The latter is often considered the easy way out, while showing allows the reader to deduce what's going on. This means the reader has a more active role in the story. Some part, no matter how small, is left up to the reader to decide, and that makes the reader have a stronger connection to the story. I'm always using Harry Potter, so I'm sorry. But recently, it came to light that J.K. Rowling never outright said that Hermione was white. And when she was asked how she felt about Hermione being black, she replied that she welcomed the idea. It was always something that was left up to the readers to decide. So in an essence, no two readers will read the same story. Showing allows for just enough addition by the reader to make them feel like they're involved. And telling kind of steals away that possibility. This is not a simple topic, but I hope that my solution is simple enough for you guys. When you get sucked into the rabbit hole of describing every single detail of your novel, stop to ask if that topic is of importance to the plot. Let's just break that down a little bit more. Do we care how Sally gets ready in the morning? Sometimes. Do we care how Bob makes his coffee? Sometimes. What I mean by sometimes is it depends. All right, enough with the wishy-washy answers. If Sally is getting ready in the morning for the wake and funeral of her husband, then yes, we care. If she's an 11 year old girl and it takes her 80 minutes to get ready in the morning, we don't care. Don't make us read 80 minutes of her getting ready in the morning. If Bob has to make coffee for the president, then we might care about how he does it. We won't care though if it's his morning brew at home before stumbling out of his apartment half asleep. Showing rather than telling immerses the reader in the story and makes them forget about the writer behind the words. Telling the parts that you need to show steal away from the reader's experience. Now that we know why showing is so important and telling is typically frowned upon, let's get to the meaty details that all of you really want to know. How do you know when to show and not tell? It boils down to wasted words, or WW. I'm very familiar with good old WW. Back in the day, we were the greatest of friends. I used to get frustrated and confused by how frequently my creative writing teachers would label my writing as wasted words. And then I would typically just ignore their heinous red marks all over my paper. It took some years, but that advice finally sank in. Showing versus telling boils down to wasted words. Your time is valuable. Your reader's time is also valuable. Therefore, you need to give them something of value for every second they spend reading your novel. They're doing you the greatest favor in the world. They're taking a chance on your novel. Don't waste their precious time. Make sure every word you use has a purpose. 
If you, as the writer, just absolutely love coffee and want to spend 10 minutes detailing how you make it, that doesn't help the story. As much fun as you had writing it, it's a detail that needs to be told and not shown. I'm actually guilty of writing this very scene because I love coffee so much. How do you know ahead of time whether a description will be deemed as wasted words? First, you won't always know. Second, ask, does this serve a purpose in my novel? Does it show characterization, add tension, add mystery, describe an important ability or power? If it doesn't do something important, you should probably keep the showing to a minimum on that point. But what if you've already written your novel? That's where the editing comes in. So then let's talk about overwriters and underwriters, because telling tends to be where people underwrite and showing tends to be where people overwrite. An overwriter edits in a completely different way than an underwriter does. I'm part of the former party, and I tend to describe more than necessary and have to trim things down at a later time. That's okay, that's what editing is for anyway. But Vivian, that's a waste of time. If I just figure out what sentence to show and which one to tell, then I, I won't have that editing to do anymore. You will invariably end up nailing a description, only to find later that you don't need it. So you kind of can't get around this editing process. It happens to all of us. You might think that you need to show us how Martha panics before a test when showing her getting carted off on a gurney after the test might have more comedic punch. So you might end up rewriting it anyway. My point is this, don't sweat it while you're writing your first draft. You're going to learn far more by writing and editing than you would by being afraid of over or under showing. My advice is this, finish that first draft. Tell the story and then worry about how you told it after. Your beta readers, if they are good and you should keep hunting until you find some good ones, will let you know if they get bored in chapter five after the bedroom cleaning scene. And then you'll know if you need to tell it rather than show it or just go ahead and cut it because we don't need to see someone cleaning their room. If you deem showing necessary in a sentence, then here are a few examples so you can see exactly how to show and not tell. So the following sentence, is obviously telling. The old man struggled to pick up his glasses. That's pretty dry. You can't really get much detail from that one or imagine anything about the guy or his glasses, anything like that. The man's hunched back and even more his liver spotted hand shaking as he strained to reach his glasses. You can see that the sentence is longer but it's now more vivid. Character description, something a lot of people ask me about, has been woven in by showing and not telling. Here's another one. The dog was scared and took off at a run. Okay, we can kind of imagine the dog. We don't know if it's big, small. The following is showing. The little dog tucked its tail and let out a whimper as he scurried away. Most of us know dog behavior well enough to know that a dog tucking its tail means that it's scared. So when you're trying to figure out how to digest, <sighs> That just was not the word I was looking for there. When you're trying to figure out how to dissect your sentences and turn them into showing sentences, look at the verbs and the adjectives. Those aren't the only things that you should look at, but those are things that you can start with. The word scared is replaced by a description of what a scared dog looks like. Tail tucked and whimpering. All right, so I have some homework for you guys, or rather a writing exercises because that probably sounds like more fun than work. All right, so turn the following sentences into one or more that shows rather than tells. And I want you guys to put your sentences down in the comments below. That's my challenge. Aunt Penelope was enraged. She had never been in a more filthy place in her life. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope this was helpful. Whether you catch yourself in the act of showing too much or realizing in the editing phase that you need to use more descriptions, remember that your writing is always a work in progress. Continually improve and allow yourself to tinker on that first draft. Don't let mechanics and technical issues like showing versus telling hold you back from getting your story out into the world. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. I post new writing videos every Wednesday, and if you ever have a topic that you would like me to cover, just go ahead and drop a line down below, and I will be sure to try my best to get to it. Bye, guys.